doesn't matter whether you run a brick and mortar business, offer freelance services online, or do affiliate or network marketing, understanding marketing is the first step in doing marketing well. Even more broadly, it's how we can get what we want out of life. While many people have a negative feeling about marketing, they don't realize they're doing it all the time or that it can be beautiful. As expert Seth Godin defines it, marketing is the generous act of helping others get what they want. But it goes beyond that, as Seth is narrowing it down to marketing done well. So we'll look at what it is completely, and we'll see why one word Seth used holds a secret to what underlies all of marketing. This is the Heart Body Business Podcast. Inspiration, tips, and tools for entrepreneurs seeking a more fulfilling type of success. One that stems from exploring and expressing their true passion and purpose and finding healthy ways to do so. All coupled with insights and action items to get a business moving in the right direction. I'm Steve, your host, and I invite you to learn more at heartbodybusiness.com. Many people have a negative association with marketing because they think of it in terms of someone trying to sell something that another doesn't want. There is, of course, some truth to that because humans have a survival instinct that seeks wealth for the purpose of security. And that survival instinct, when it's not driven by the heart, sees the world narrowly. It looks for its wealth at any cost. And it is only the higher human elements that start to consider the larger world and the impact on other people. So we often use the principles of marketing to sell our goods and services to those who do not want or need them. And yet in doing so, we undermine our own marketing efforts, especially in an age of social media. If we're not actually helping others with what we offer, we end up with buyer's remorse and negative reviews. We end up with customer support issues, driving up our costs of support, or we fail to provide support and get a worse reputation still. Everything's connected. But let's step back a moment and understand what marketing is, because you're doing it all the time, so you might as well make the most of it. In a business context, marketing is not just about the ads we run. It is not just about the emails we send. It is so much more. Marketing seeks to understand the world around the business, its environment. Not only an understanding of who wants or needs our products and services, and who does not, but how they are feeling based on the mood of the world. What are their current hopes and fears based on the economy, or political events, or popular events and viral trends? It then seeks to meet the appropriate people with the appropriate interaction for what they are thinking and feeling, and ultimately to connect them with why our products or services will help them at this time, and all at a price or exchange that is valuable to them. Marketing then seeks feedback as to how the interaction was received. Did people purchase or not, and why? Marketing also continues to interact with people over time, adjusting as much as possible to their individual wants and needs, always seeking to better position the company and its products and services in the hearts and minds of its own little world of prospects and customers. All of this is literally an extension of what it means to be human which is why you can say we are marketing all the time. All our senses help us to understand our environment, including the people around us. From here, we interact with them, always seeking a benefit for ourselves on some level, whether it's food or sex or money, or whether it's love, respect, or power, and so on. We gauge responses, 
seeing whether we've benefited and how and from whom. We alter our behavior based on this, even down to the individuals or groups we work with. So marketing is everything about our perception of the world and our consequent interactions with it in order to trade for something we want. It is, in effect, our entire exchange with the human world. But that is not the big takeaway, which will lead us back to Seth Godin's definition. The big takeaway is this. Our perception of the world and the quality of the interactions we have with others both start inside us. Marketing starts inside you. It's based on the environment you've grown up with, the people who have taught you, the friends you've kept, the books you've read, the shows you've watched, the attitude and beliefs you've developed. This is why real education and why surrounding yourself with smart people, actually wise people, and learning from them and joining forces with those who provide support rather than bringing you down. All of this builds who you are and what you radiate into the world, which in turn alter everything about how you see the world and what you attract to you in order to interact with people and opportunities. And it affects how they receive that interaction, whether they believe what you're saying or what you're sharing. Along with perhaps your physical appearance, your radiation is in effect your charisma. It determines who's drawn to you in the first place and based on their own radiation determines how people respond to you, whether they will in the end buy what you are selling, metaphorically as in believing you or literally as in purchasing from your business. Who you are is the heart of marketing. When Seth Godin defined marketing as the generous act of helping others get what they want, he wasn't actually defining marketing. He was explaining how to do it well. People can market poorly all day long. We see this in people who cannot sell themselves. They are lonely, lacking opportunity, and so on. We see this in businesses who struggle to sell and grow. Often, it may be because they approach the world with a hand out, expecting to receive without giving or without giving a good value, perhaps because they haven't bothered to understand what someone else considers a good value. They are seeking their own needs first. Maybe they are willing to trick someone into a purchase, or maybe they're much more sincere than that but they are radiating desperation, which stems from a me-first belief system. The moment Seth says generous, he is not talking about using slick skills to help others get what they want. If it's real, then generous is something that is inside us. It's who we are or who we can attempt to be more and more over time. But it establishes our radiation and comes from the heart, which is the most attractive source we have. If we are generous, we want to help others get what they want or need. And when others sense this, they trust us. They trust that they will do well by doing business with us. And they are more willing not only to buy, but to establish a relationship and become a long-term customer. Now, real love is a sustainable force. It desires a give and take that is mutually beneficial, that grows all parties. Therefore, if we love a customer and we love ourselves, we know that we must value and pay for that which we receive and equally must be valued and paid for that which we offer. So as generous as we may wish to be, as much as we may wish to give to the world, it is okay and in fact necessary to receive something in return. This may take various forms, but it must allow us to continue our generosity. This is why we're paid for helping others in business. And the more generous we are, 
the more people and opportunities we can attract, the more we will be trusted and the better we can succeed. Seth surely knows that this is also the only kind of marketing that will make us feel fulfilled and is most likely to drive lasting success. And while no one moves from self-interest to selfless generosity overnight, it is a direction for us to pursue. The word generous in Seth's definition is our secret to marketing, although it could be any other word that reminds us this. We are the heart of our marketing. It all stems from us, and if we have a business, it stems from everyone in the business as well. A reminder of the importance of hiring, not only for what someone knows, but for who someone is. The team sets a collective radiation and a collective belief about the environment and a collective interaction with one another and with prospects and customers. They set up who the business responds with and how and help to determine how those people will respond. We're all generous to different degrees. Our businesses are as well. So today the challenge is to reflect on where you can increase that generosity personally or in business. What can you do to help someone else get what they want? You can think of this in terms of a single person to test something out or just to practice this important principle. Or you can look for ways to systematically integrate more generosity into how you do things. As you do this, your radiation changes and people's response to you changes. Some of them, no longer relating to you at all, may disappear from your environment. And that's okay. Those are the people who are not a good fit for your generosity. Others will appear who are a better fit for what you're trying to do in the world, who will ultimately bring you more success and happiness as well. Generosity is an expression of love, and we always need more of that in the world. So I encourage you to find your next generous move and in the process, become a better marketer and a better liver of life. Till next time, thanks for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe. You can also join our mailing list to get alerts on our latest episodes and other tips, tools, and news. Learn more and sign up at heartbodybusiness.com.